Police have made two arrests in the hunt for a Marion County man who's accused of shooting at two officers. We'll have the details straight ahead. And police say a Frankfurt teenager went missing earlier this week but has yet to be found. Hear what his family is saying. And Lexington's newest intersection finally getting a traffic signal. Coming up, we'll tell you when officials plan to have it installed. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. Welcome in. A little trouble hitting the high notes today, <laughs> but it's your I Thursday. Feel, I feel really bad for you, Bill, but, you know. I'm Bill Bryant. We'll get you a lozenge soon yeah, enough. Exactly. I'm Rebecca Smith. Thanks for joining us. Let's turn into Micah to see what's happening with weather. We are getting the rain on out of here. And look, a lot of this over toward the east and southeastern zones, that is that front trying to move on through. Give it another few hours. It'll be long gone. And back toward the west, there's just not much showing up. Temperature-wise, it will start to fall off the map. We're at 53 now in Lexington. We'll finish off right around 50 degrees in central and southern zones right there in the mid-50s. It kind of depends on where you are. Northern zones already in the mid-40s. Highs today be right around 58 degrees, mainly dry, but that wind in there make it feel a little cooler as we go throughout your workday. I'll take you into tomorrow. It's even colder tomorrow, but at least we have consecutive days of dry days. When does the rain move back in? I'll have that coming up. See you then. We're continuing to track developing news this morning in the manhunt for Floyd Ray Cook. Police say that Cook has been on the run since Saturday after he shot a Tennessee police <laughs> officer and later fired shots at a Kentucky state trooper. Authorities say a U.S. Marshal pulled over a vehicle in White House, Tennessee last night. Someone in the car opened fire. At first, investigators thought it was Cook and an alleged accomplice, Troy Wayne. Later, they said they couldn't be sure they were both in it. Police say the vehicle sped away, hit two other vehicles, and crashed into a fence. Two people inside that vehicle ran away. Police say one of them turned out to be Wayne's girlfriend. They say she was arrested and is being treated as an accomplice. Shortly after, police also found Wayne and arrested him. Police say Cook is still on the run, but they hope his accomplices will help them with locating him. This morning, we know some more about a shooting in Madison County that killed one person and injured two others. Richmond police now say 22-year-old Joshua Brown shot Steve Thomas Martin and Martin's 21-year-old daughter before shooting himself in the head. The shooting happened Tuesday afternoon along Jason Drive near the Eastern Bypass. Martin died. Police say his daughter was shot in the leg but is now out of the hospital. Brown was taken to UK hospital, but his condition is not known to us. Friends say that he is the daughter's ex-boyfriend. Police are still trying to figure out what led up to the shooting. This morning, police say a Richmond man faces dozens of child pornography charges. Police say a joint operation by the FBI and state police led to the arrest of 26-year-old Joshua Hicks yesterday afternoon. We were there as police and the FBI raided Hicks' home on Brittany Circle in Richmond. An FBI spokesperson told us Hicks has been charged with 30 counts of possessing child pornography. A Knox County couple is behind bars this morning after police say they abused their five-month-old baby. State police charge 24-year-old Kenneth Hooker and 21-year-old Jessica Hooker with first-degree criminal abuse. They say Jessica took the baby to the Knox County Health Department to get WIC benefits, but police say social workers noticed the child had severe rashes and told Jessica to take her to the hospital. Doctors say the child only weighed around seven pounds. They also say she had not received medical care in four months. Well, he had been missing for days, but yesterday an elderly Central Kentucky man was found alive inside his wrecked car. It was down an embankment. Investigators now believe that he had been in that car the whole time. Emergency crews rescued him off White Oak Pike in Harrison County. WKYT's Garrett Weimer has more on that story. Family and friends searched this road before. Drove it real slow, looking over, looking over ditches to see any kind of sign of, a, of, of tracks or anything. Never seen nothing. Turns out Wilbur Herod was there all along. And now that I see the bank, I understand why no one didn't, didn't see him. Just like he just and was gone, you know, over the bank. Herod was missing for nearly five days. Last seen Friday afternoon when he left a friend's house in Sadieville. He wasn't far away from there found near the Scott County line along Highway 356 in Harrison County. To me, somewhat of a miracle that he was spotted because I don't believe in his, uh, his age and his medical condition, he would have made it up to the roadway. And when I seen the bank that, that he went over, I, it scared me when I seen it. Herod's nephew says he came out here because he wanted to see just what exactly his uncle went through and where he spent several days and nights. 
you imagine being trapped in something that you can't get out of? That, that'd be, phew, I'd, I'd be, I don't know what you'd go through. I don't, I don't know what he was, I'm sure he was just scared to death. We're told Herod was dehydrated, but conscious and talking when rescue crews found him. And what I was told, he told him it's about time he showed up. <laughs> now family members say they look forward to sharing a message of their own with him. Tell him I love him, I'm glad to see him. In Harrison County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. And authorities and family members told us that they expect Herod to be okay, but at last check, he was still listed in critical condition at UK Hospital. New this morning, five people had to be taken to the hospital after a chemical spill occurred at the Louisville Police Department. LMPD officials say it happened yesterday afternoon. Some employees were carrying boxes, actually, of a no, a, anhydrous ammonia when it fell and spilled the contents. The smell evacuated the building. Police say the people injured expected to be all right. The building has been decontaminated. This morning, state highway officials are planning to install a traffic signal at Lexington's newest intersection within the next week or so. The intersection of Citation Boulevard and Greendale Road just opened last month, but in the first two days, Lexington police were called to at least five crashes there. The Kentucky Transportation Cabinet says the new standard traffic light will be installed later this week or early next week, depending on the weather. A mystery that has a Franklin County family very worried this morning. A 17-year-old disappeared two days ago, and police say he has not been heard from since. Zachary Watson's family says this is out of character for him. Now they're asking for help finding him. Monique Blair has more with Zachary's mom. He has never done this before, ever. Deborah Parton's 17-year-old son, Zachary Watson, stayed home from school Monday because she says he wasn't feeling well. Around 4 o'clock, he was feeling better and went to work. Zach was last seen Monday evening, shortly around the time he left his job here at the YMCA in Frankfurt. His mom tells me he has not been seen or heard from since. 9.30, he wasn't home. 10, he wasn't home. I was still at that time texting and calling. Parton says Frankfurt police told her her son's cell phone pinged a cell tower in downtown Frankfurt Monday night around 1130. But there hasn't been any activity since. He's never threatened to leave. None, none of it. Like, I would have never dreamed of this. Watson's last known phone call was made to his girlfriend at 6.20 Monday evening. Parton says Watson's girlfriend broke up with him Monday. Now Parton is pleading for her son to let her know he is safe. Don't be scared to come home. You're not going to be in trouble. We just want you home safe. Watson was last seen wearing a long-sleeved light blue YMCA shirt with blue jeans. He's liking my puzzle piece. My life is my key. My life is incomplete without him. In Frankfurt, Monique Blair, WKYT. Frankfurt police are also asking for help finding Zachary. They say Zachary is not considered to be a runaway. A new WKYT Herald Leader Bluegrass poll finds Democrat Jack Conway keeping his lead over Republican Matt Bevan in the race for governor. Independent Drew Curtis continues to gain little traction. It is 45% for Conway, 40% for Bevan, 6% for Curtis in the new poll. One in 10 people remain undecided. For Bevan, the Bluegrass poll found his challenge is more people, 38%, have an unfavorable opinion of him than a favorable one. Conway scored best on our our honesty question, 37% of those polls said he was the most honest candidate. Two of the hot topics in the race, Bevan's stand that teachers should be allowed to carry guns at schools. The majority of that one, 52% of Kentuckians disagree with him. Plus, the future of Kentucky's expansion of Medicaid benefits implemented by outgoing Governor Steve Beshear. The majority, 54%, say the next governor should maintain those. For more Bluegrass poll results, go to WKYT.com. Well, it's looking more likely that Congressman Paul Ryan will be the next Speaker of the U.S. House. Yesterday, his Republican colleagues overwhelmingly nominated him to become the next Speaker. Kentucky's 6th District Congressman Andy Barr says he hopes Ryan will be a unifying Speaker. I think this is a very uh, refreshing uh, opportunity for uh, the Congress uh, to take a step forward and deliver uh, solutions to the American people that they deserve. The entire House, Democrats and Republicans will vote on Ryan's nomination today. Folks in Nelson County are beginning to train for a special race to honor a police officer who was killed two years ago. 
Bardstown police officer Jason Ellis was murdered in 2013, but no one has been arrested for the crime. Every year, the group Law Enforcement United holds a 250-mile bike ride from Virginia to Washington, D.C. A small group of people that knew Ellis say they are now training to take part in the race in his honor and to bring awareness to a crime that has hurt their community. They say the bike ride raises money for the families of officers who died in the line of duty. The Kentucky team is hoping to raise $7,500. Good luck to them with yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. WKYT this morning just getting started here on your Thursday. Are all processed foods bad? Moms Every Day will help us answer this question when we return. And we still have a little rain outside this morning off toward the east and southeastern zones, but that moves on out. Cool air funnels back in. Show you that forecast coming up next.